I bet no one in this room remembers what they were doing at exactly 2.36 p.m. on April 14th of this year. I certainly don't. It was a normal Friday, so you're at school or work or whatever you normally do at 2.36 p.m. on a Friday. It wasn't an atypical Friday for me either. The only thing is, I wasn't at school. I was doing this. Yep, this was my B-Real post. I don't remember taking it, and I don't remember posting it to about 60 of my friends. I was just coming to after anesthesia, and I guess I had been pretty insistent on posting my B-Real on time. <laughs> Hospital procedures like this one are a part of my routine. So it is super important for me to be here and talk to you guys today. So I want to continue to talk about how I was born with tracheoesophageal fistula, which is a congenital birth condition, which meant that my esophagus was not connected to my stomach. Instead, my trachea was. So while my anatomy looked like the image on the right, yours looked a lot more like the image on the left. That's not great. It means that I was born unable to swallow. And I had life-saving surgery at two days old to repair my internal plumbing. I also live with Crohn's disease, a condition that causes painful inflammation in both the large and small intestine. I'm currently working with doctors at Boston Children's Hospital to find the best treatment plan for me. So in talking to you guys today about my medical conditions, I want to tell you about why I am sustained because I wouldn't be here today leading my normal high school life without the research that developed the treatments that sustain me. I take four prescription medications right now, each of which was only approved for patient use after study under a clinical trial. And while those medications wouldn't exist without the doctors and scientists that work towards creating them, they would never have reached patients like me and patients like you without the patients who volunteered to participate in the studies that proved my medication's effectiveness and safety. So, because I understand that I should be grateful to the people who participated in trials that sustain me, I have participated in trials myself, like the one I participated in on the day I posted this B-reel. Specifically, that trial was seeking to determine whether a new imaging technology could be effective to measure high blood pressure leading to the liver. That dangerous condition can only be diagnosed in children right now through a highly invasive and painful procedure. Though I have no personal stake in the approval of this new non-invasive machine, there's a child out there just like me and just like you who does. And this wasn't the first study I participated in. Actually, I was patient number one in the LEAP study, a now relatively famous examination of the link between peanut exposure in early childhood and later development of a peanut allergy. The study and its follow-ups followed me for 16 years of my life, and it fundamentally altered the way that parents are advised to approach allergy prevention. Now, I'm not trying to brag, but one of my current doctors actually called me a celebrity when he found out I had been part of this study. So, in telling you guys about the studies I've participated in, I want to tell you about why it's so important that we all participate in medical research. While the studies I've participated in have focused largely on peanut allergies and imaging technologies, we all are affected by and benefit from medical research. So I'm not claiming to have saved lives directly by participating in these studies. Instead, I am claiming, I'm hoping to show how I, and quite literally any of you, can give back to other people in one of the most human ways possible, by helping improve their health and quality of life. So, Studies affect us all every day. Every medication you take was probably approved by the FDA. 
And every medication approved by the FDA, as it says on their website, after being tested in animals and laboratories, was then tested in human volunteers. The testing in human volunteers was absolutely necessary in order to prove the medication's safety and effectiveness. Take, for example, the sweeping clinical trials that allowed COVID vaccines to be approved so quickly. There were 100,000 volunteers across the United States who participated in those trials. Though I personally couldn't participate because of my pre-existing conditions, I bet there's someone in this room, and I know that there are people in your communities, our community, who did participate. And giving up their time and potentially risking their health, every single one of those volunteers contributed to a better, healthier society. So if participating in research is so important, how come an NIH study tells us that only 5.1% of American adults have ever participated in a clinical trial? Now, I get that some people think they don't have time for this or honestly just haven't even thought about it. But I assure you, whether you step foot in a hospital only once a year for a checkup or every day for inpatient treatment, we all benefit from and can easily participate in medical research. So the next time you find yourself in a doctor's office, look around. I bet there are flyers up there for, for studies that you could participate in. And since you're in the waiting room, you don't have anything better to do than look at those flyers. So I urge you to go read them. I also urge you to go online and join potential patient or healthy volunteer lists for recruiting studies in your area. That way, if a study thinks they could benefit from your help, they can reach out to you instead of your having to do research to find them. We all can benefit from clinical trials, and we all can participate in them. And if all this gratitude and empathy stuff isn't working for you, well, actually, you can get paid for this. <laughs> yep. Another NIH study found that in 2021, for healthy volunteers who participated in just one or two trials a year, the median payout was $3,070. As the WHO reported in 2022, there were 54,952 clinical trials registered in the United States. We need active and willing participants in those trials in order to better the health of our entire society, not just ourselves. Each trial is a lesson in empathy and gratitude. You never know when your life will be improved by a trial and you never know when your participation in a trial could help save a life. Thank you.